and welcome to our in-depth space weather video. Looking at fields, features, sunspots, coronal holes, and coronal mass ejections and solar flares. We've got all of those things happening at the moment. Let's take a look at the last four hours of magnetohydrodynamic pressure. It's pretty low. Although we do see, it looks like multiple plasma spheres here. Some additional plasma rings here forming. It's the aftermath of the coronal mass ejection strike as Earth's magnetic environment attempts to reach static equilibrium. The scale you're looking at here is nanopascals, magnetohydrodynamic pressure over the past four hours. The majority of the pressure at the moment in the magneto tail side, not the sun facing side. So when we look at the real time solar wind here, we'll see not a whole lot of a signal there. There was a drop into negative BZ territory when that occurred. That was around 930. So just before that, we saw this drop into a negative BZ. Besides that, not a lot of a signal associated with any of that activity there. Looks like maybe a cosmic ray strike here, some error bars lighting up on the, looks like the ACE and the Discover there, showing some errors. It's unlikely that the solar wind density made it down to point, point 0.19, point 0.17 protons per cubic centimeter. Current conditions are listed as quite a diffuse solar wind there, quite weak. 2.1 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind, did I say speed? Solar wind density, 2.1 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed, 427 kilometers per second. Let's take a look at ground magnetic perturbations. Geospace Delta B changes to Earth B field. Like our Geospace Magnetosphere movie, the first. It was four hours of data, so is this. That was Earth's magnetic moment from space. This is Earth's magnetic moment from the ground in magnetic flux density or nano Tesla. We'll let that play all the way through so we don't need to edit the video and so we can get it onto your screen as possible. Please share, please press like, subscribe, tell your friends and foes about us. Leave us a comment, leave us a nice comment, leave us a mean comment, leave us a thumbs down if you don't like me. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I've been a public figure since 1997 when I took up bicycle racing as a cross country mountain bike racer. <clears throat> here's your GOES magnetometer over the past three days, and here's your geomagnetic storm. Those spiky readings are a result of a bunch of solar plasma showing up right on our doorstep around planet Earth. Since then, a little smoother. Some higher highs and some higher, some, some lower highs and some higher lows happening since. By the way, make sure you watch us on Twitter. We've got all kinds of great retweets, and we're not going to show you any of those because you've got to follow us on Twitter to see them. Once again, press like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Thanks to our YouTube viewers. Thanks to the Smash team. Thanks to the Smash of Hazard. Shout out to Henry and Al, our pals from New Hampshire. Next, looking at the heliospheric current sheet. We expect to be in a North Pole current sheet by tomorrow. Well, it's possible. I'll just say it's possible. So what you're looking at here is the polarity of the solar plasma. This is South Pole plasma. This is North Pole plasma. I'll give it a 50-50 chance that by the time tomorrow's Daily Space Weather video is made, we'll be in a North Pole current sheet. In other words, I'm indecisive. We'll also show the line of sight plot. We've got a new sunspot risen. We'll get to it in a moment. You can see that great line of sight view there showing the perspective from Earth as well as the solar magnetogram. Part of the National Sunspot Observatory data, some of the best that there is. Next to the line of sight coronal hole plot and a ton of coronal holes here. Got some north ones, north pole oriented ones rotating in here on the east. And some south pole oriented ones here rotating just into the Earth, just past the Earth facing zone at the moment. Sun's B field shown here in blue. North Pole coronal holes shown in green, South Pole coronal holes shown in red. Keep in mind the magnetic environment can suddenly change. Next thing we're looking at is 193 angstroms from the SDO, one of the better wavelengths to show coronal holes, and you can see some evidence of the migration of the South Solar Polar Field as it makes its way to become the North Solar Polar Field, and vice versa with the North Pole moving South. 
We've also got some proton events and some solar flares and some sunspots to cover, so let's move on to sunspots. We've got a new sunspot rising right over here. It's going to be known as Sunspot 2971 in all likelihood. It's right there. You can just see the magnetic field coming into view. It appeared to be an Alpha Class Sunspot when we did show prep. Make sure you tune into our bonus features segment. We'll show you a high res image of that. Next 1700 angstroms to see Sunspot 2965 has degraded slightly here over the past 24, otherwise things remaining mostly stable on the closest star. Let's take a look at flaring. So here's the GOES X-ray flux over the past three days, as measured by the GOES 16 and GOES 17. Two different bands there on each satellite, and yeah, a series of C-class flares here. One of these did produce a proton event. We'll get to that momentarily. And one C-class flare happening there while we did show prep. So let's take a look at the 94 angstroms imagery. There was a simul flare that happened. Sort of a new active region just popping up right at that moment behind Sunspot 2965, which remains the most likely place to see additional large solar flares. Again, we saw a proton event strike with this, so we'll get to that. we got to blast through a lot more information here. Pardon the speed of the broadcast, but it's because of time sensitivity. We were running a bit late today. So there's the, po the proton event. Likely caused by this flare here at which there was peak flux at 2210 universal time. That was a C5.3. let's bring it up. So there's the flare. It was that simul flare moment. We saw a little bit of flaring happening from this active region behind Sunspot 2965. Great imagery of that. Peak flux in the proton event was around 640 universal time this morning. So it took a few hours for the majority of those to show up. KP index is just at 1. That's a measurement of global geomagnetism. By the way, if you enjoy the content, press like, subscribe, tell your friends and foes about us, visit our links, consider becoming a member of the Smash team and supporting us that way. We replace Patreon with a superior subscription service to site. Welcome to the Neo-Renaissance. Smashomash.com slash Smash team. Next to planetary forecast, here's where things are now. Here's where things will be in a week. We'll have a crescent waning moon as we do after full moons. Here's what's going on in the sky above my head. If you're up before dawn, you may see Mars and Venus and Saturn and Mercury and Jupiter all rising ahead of the sun. That's from in-the-sky.org. The yellow line is the ecliptic. The blue line is the galactic plane. And let's move on to coronal mass ejection since we've seen some. Pretty spectacular ones, actually. Don't worry, they're not earthly directed. But here's the view from Stereo A at Lagrange 5 and the Soho Lasco C3 at Lagrange 1. And we captured this bubble CME. So right around 242 there. This one's 238 universal time. This is 242. Got this interesting bubble eruption. And that bubble thing is on the far side of the sun, folks, not on the Earth side. So as much as that may look like a halo ejection, it really isn't at least not apparently. We'll take a look at that again. Some of that ejecta may be earthly directed. We wouldn't we would not expect a major coronal mass ejection strike from that. It's quite diffuse and the majority of the ejecta certainly south of Earth. So this first event here on the Earth side, Earth would be, by the way, off in this direction from Stereo A's perspective. You can see most of that ejecta is certainly to Earth's south, and it can be very deceptive when CMEs happen at the same time. I don't think that's an Earth strike. That's what I think at the moment. We'll have to wait for additional analysis of that. Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Space Weather. Again, visit our links. Support the channel. Congratulations on realizing we exist. May that solar wind be at your back. And I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash-O-Mash, signing off. From the Smash News Network, least busted name.
in news.